up, y'all? So I did this piece here in Perth the other day. Let me show you what it looks like. Looks like this. And Janice and I and everyone loved it so much that we want to make it on a larger round scale. So I am going to try that today. I've already painted it white, but I don't know if you guys can see here the soft white color um, that contrasts slightly with the white on the bottom and maybe too much of a glare. But I want to make that a little bit more evident. Maybe you can see it right here. It's super soft, but I want to make that more evident in this piece. So what I'm going to do is put a hint of black into the white paint um, that I'm going to paint on this. So I poured some of the white paint that I already have down for my last coat into this bucket. And I'm going to add a little bit of black airbrush paint. You can use whatever kind of black paint to add to it as long as it's not an oil paint. Um, since this is water-based, I'm going to add a water-based, which would be this airbrush paint. Actually, I'm going to let Jeff add it because I'm scared. Mm -hmm. It's just, you just add just a little I bit. I didn't shake it at all. And I don't want it to be evidently gray, like obvious. So I'm just adding enough to make it basically not noticeable until... I have the white that I'm going to lace on top of it. I feel like this is a science experiment that's going to explode. Boom. I mean, that's just like to a start, dot. A drop. Now this is like 300 mils. I don't ask me what that translates into um, because I do not know in terms of ounces. A lot of times, a little bit goes a long way, and you can always add more. So make sure you take that into consideration. And I don't even know if this is enough to cover that. This is probably enough, right? To roll? To roll. Yeah. So that's... So this is the roller that I was using for the that's first a, roll. That's a, and this is the gray that we just made no, to show the really difference. Not. May need to add a drop more. Yeah, looks like something. Like I said, y'all, I don't want it to be like. Like you can't, you won't be able to notice it on camera, but you'll definitely see it on there. That's yeah. the most difference I would do. And so that's what we're gonna do. I actually need to pour this in here so I can use this roller base again. Hey, it was Lorraine. Did this beautiful piece, and I love the offsetness of it. And I want to maybe offset this one a little bit. So I'm going to try. 
try to be offset with this. So I've made up some resin. This is Art Coat by Stone Coat Countertops. We do have this available on our website. You can also get it from Stone Coat and they have a discount on their site. Um, there's a code, it's called YALL, Y-A-L-L, -L, all capitals. They'll give you a little discount. So, I'm gonna mix some color. I'm using the same colors that I did um, in a piece that I did when Stone Coat was here. And those colors were Plum by Color Obsession, 007 Gold, Color Obsession, Green Seas by Color Obsession, and their new Pink Pop Pigment Powder by Color Obsession. I'm also gonna use a little bit of Stone Coat's White Base Tint as well. Um, most of these colors you can get on our website. As soon as I get home from this trip, as we are in Australia, I will make the rest of the colors available. I think the only thing that I don't have up right now is Green Seas and the Pink Pop, I think. He just walked in. What's up? Are you live? No, I'm recording. I'm not gonna make that much of the color resin because it is gonna be a hyper negative space pour. Will you show them that piece so that they know what colors in general idea I'm going for for this piece? like this. So that's kind of where we're at, where we're going, what we're working with for this. Um, the first color I'm going to mix up is the plum. It's a super awesome, deep purpley color, but with like like magenta undertones. So it's like a warm purple. It's been one of my favorites ever since I started carrying Color Obsession. And it is really cold in the studio today. So the paints are kind of more stiff. So it's gonna take about a second longer to mix this color in, but it's, it's not gonna take long at all. She has really good quality paints, as are all of the paints that I carry on our website. So I'm going to make sure that this is an opaque color. Um, the paste itself is opaque, so as long as you have the proper amount of paint in your resin, it will be an opaque color as well. You can put less paint in it and make it more translucent, but I'm, I'm looking for a really deep color. But it looks like, um, looks like it's basically where I would want it. I may have to mix up another one of these actually because I just realized how much surface I'm going to end up covering. I'm going to pull that color back out of the stock. Next color is Green Seas. This is a lovely, it's like Tiffany, but a little bit more green. I don't know how well it's showing on the screen. I don't have to worry about like being in a hurry and stressing out about this resin setting because typically under ideal conditions, you get, a, I mean, I've worked it for about two hours before they advertise like an hour. And I think that's basically under the worst conditions you can get an hour out of it, but it's a dry, well, it's not in the seventies here. It's probably in the lower 60s, but I still will be able to get uh, close to two hours. But it's not gonna take me two hours to do this piece. But I think it's important to not rush through um, doing your artwork, because when you rush, you make mistakes. So having a resin that gives you a long working time, whether it's stone coats or not, is very important. But because stone coats one of my favorites, um, and the reasons are that it's got really good heat resistance, actually 500 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Um, so if I have any leftover resin, I might decide to make a coaster or two. It's not going to hurt anything and it'll be um, heat resistant if someone sets like a hot cup of coffee or something like that down on a coaster. I am unloading a little bit of this resin because with this gold I don't want to make all that much because it's more or less just an accent color. And I usually say not to put too much of the product in to your resin because you don't want marshmallow fluff, but with this gold I really like to load it so that it's a rich color and it um, more flexible to float to the surface. When you mix the powder into resin, make sure that you take your time and basically fold it into your resin because if you just go crazy and start stirring it, it's just going to puff up into your face. And that is not a good time. We don't want to break this stuff. Which reminds me that um, if you're sensitive at all or um, have any ailments, that are sensitive to anything at all. Wear a good respirator and be in a well-ventilated area. The studio is quite large and we have the doors open. So I'm not going to be wearing a respirator today. But if that's something that concerns you, by all means, take your precautions. The next color I'm mixing up is Stone Coats, this white. It's a base tint. This is going to give me all the great cells that I'm looking for in this piece. Um, a lot of people have questions about cells, and this is my, basically, it's not a secret, but if I didn't share my knowledge, this would be what I would consider my, my master secret to getting great, large cells that make a piece more dynamic. It's really important that you use a minimal base tint into your resin. If you use too much, your cells aren't gonna last. Less is more 100% with this product. And you just want enough to make your paint opaque. So if you stir up your color, lift your stir stick out. And if you're using a wooden one, if you can see any of that wood color through it, that tan color, then you don't have enough and mix just a little bit more in. Build this color. Don't just add a bunch. Yeah, it's looking a little bit tan, so I'm going to add just another drop and call it good. Hope you can see that. It's not a lot at all. And sometimes I mix um, a white Paste and then add a couple drops of this to give me the cells so I have like an opaque color without the risk of it having too much of the base tint mixed into it. Right, the last color I'm mixing up is the pink pop and when you mix up this color it's important to mix some alcohol into it just a little bit but this will ensure you don't get any of those little, I call them freckles, some people call them tadpoles, but this is how you can avoid that when mixing a paste. And I find this particularly is an issue with uh, flat colors. I don't see this so much with um, metallic powders. Doesn't take a bunch of alcohol to do it. Just a few drops is enough. Once you get that mixed into here and don't have any lumps, it's easier to mix it into your resin and get a smooth paste. There's nothing more frustrating, I swear, than doing a piece and seeing a whole bunch of little freckles and tadpoles just distracts from everything you've done. <clears throat> I just splattered this whole piece.
I put around seven or eight drops in this. Swiping paper ready to go. Um, also, I'm going to change my gloves. I can see pink and gold and white all over them. And you don't want to move your resin around and mess around and get a streak in your negative space. It's a great way to ruin your day. A small space and there's and you like how people do tattoos like you think oh well, how are you gonna fit and then they use this and like they make it to where it's you know they utilize the whole space but not all of it because you've started at a point and went you know what I'm saying but sure so just a C or an S I'm gonna do a C so I'm going to start here and come here so that I can fill that in like that one over there. Yeah, I would almost do it like this then so that you go, you have like bigger areas maybe or no. I'm not going to curve it like that. So I'll come down lower then. Oh, you're going to come this way. Yeah.
Thank <laughs> you.